The people leading the Vermont Bioenergy Initiative are forging the connection between diversified agriculture and renewable energy production. These farmers, scientists, and entrepreneurs are at the forefront of a local production for local use movement, and they are proving that local food systems and clean energy production together are economical, compatible, and essential. These are their stories. I'm Nataka White, and I'm the director of the Vermont Bioenergy Initiative, a project of the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund. We provide technical assistance, research support, and funding, along with the University of Vermont Extension and others, to promote entrepreneurial activity and create jobs in Vermont's biofuel sector. We're developing a portfolio of bioenergy fuels and the raw materials needed to produce them here in Vermont. And we focused on algae to biofuels, grass energy for heating, and oilseed crops for biodiesel and livestock feed. Development in this sector of Vermont's economy will ultimately help farms diversify, stay in operation and become more self-sufficient, reduce fossil fuel consumption, and help Vermonters prepare for and mitigate the effects of peak oil and climate change. We've learned a great deal in the last eight years. Most importantly, we've proven that biofuels can help rural communities address a global issue while at the same time strengthen their local economy. The work of the people featured in these films demonstrates the viability of small-scale bioenergy production and what we've learned, we believe, can be of real benefit to other rural communities. Well, I'm, I'm a lifelong Vermonter and I see what is the best of Vermont. I want my children and grandchildren to see the same thing. This is a very good step to do that, to preserve what we have, to allow farms to continue and not as some kind of a theme park, but as real working farms, farms that can make a profit, but also be part of the community. Unless we make changes, we won't have that in another generation. This is, a, this is actually making an investment in the next generation. This is something that is working in Vermont, will work in Vermont, and I suspect that uh, in years come all over the country, people say, oh yes, we're following the Vermont model. We were a dairy farm until 2004, and once we sold the dairy cows, it freed up some land so we could do some experimenting with, with some oilseed crops. One of the, the biggest jobs of a farm, obviously, is to feed people, but farming takes an incredible amount of energy, and we thought that we'd really like to try to grow some of that energy to run our tractors, to heat our homes, because we we have oil furnaces. We took showers with water that was heated from our own sunflowers. And that's a pretty cool feeling. It's a <laughs> the furnace actually ran. <laughs> no. When my grandfather came to our farm back in the 30s, he came with horses and he grew oats to feed those horses. So, you know, those, those horses were his power. That took him to town and pulled his plow. And, and now we're growing, you know, a, an oil crop, which, which is our power now. It's just a, a different time, a different technology, but it's kind of the same thing all over again. Making biodiesel is nothing new. We're not inventing anything. It's growing it and uh, from start to finish on the farm, which is what's really exciting. Microalgae biomass has a lot of potential for different feedstocks for energy, for, for our use. One of the ones that many people are focusing on currently are liquid biofuels from algae such as biodiesel. We're working with three different species of freshwater algae. There are other researchers in Vermont who are actually looking at various native species to try to see if any of those are going to work for biofuel. We're completely recycling everything, waste products, water, nutrients, turning all of that into a commercial product. The native strains are expected to be highly adaptable to the local environments. And also we are looking at producing algae, not just for biofuel, but combining it with wastewater treatment. This is very significant because this would make the algae biomass production cost effective. This would also help in nutrient recovery, nitrogen phosphorus. We're really excited about this project with the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund because it could have a lot of relevance not only to algae oils but to any other vegetable oil feedstock for brown grease treatments at uh, wastewater treatment locations. We think that there's a tremendously broad utility to this technology. 
I'm looking at grasses for combustion and thermal energy. The biggest benefits of, of these grasses is the fact that they really protect the soil, so very little erosion occurs. These grasses also really build up organic matter. You can actually get more carbon put into the soil than what you're taking off for biomass fuel. I don't think these grasses are going to compete with good cropland. Well, you're familiar with bales of grass, and in order to burn a bale of grass, you need to process it. So the simplest form is to chop the grass like this. You can compact grass into pellets, like most people are familiar with wood pellets for pellet stoves. The briquettes, like this, take less energy to make than pellets, they're lower cost, and they burn very efficiently in the big boilers. So what our company is specializing in is the commercial customer, so that's why we opted for the larger um, form factor the briquettes. Grass energy production is a very community-based business. Like I see, you have the, the grass, the processing, and the user all within like a 30-mile radius. So it's really an engine for helping rural communities. And the thing I like about it is that it is doing good, it's a sustainable energy. And when you talk to people and they start begin to understand what the benefits are, people are very enthusiastic about it. The face of Vermont agriculture is changing but still the cost of purchasing fuel and feed is having a dramatic impact on the viability of farms everywhere. This reality is also creating new opportunities. Our investment in early stage research and development has now shown conclusively that with oilseed crop production and on-farm processing, farmers can save money and successfully manage and control the costs of fuel and feed. I became interested in oil seeds in 2004. Um, as fuel prices began to rise, farmers started to think about how they were going to cut fuel costs. And one of the logical um, ideas that farmers came up with and very innovative was to produce their own fuel. So we started to work collectively, collaboratively with the farming community to figure out if we actually could grow our own fuel here in Vermont. Our goal of the farm in the next 10, 20 years is to become self-sufficient. And you'll see that around the farm as far as uh, biodiesel production, uh, wind turbine, sunflower crops. Basically to, to grow everything, to have everything on the farm instead of buying out to uh, cut costs. We learned one process at a time and we grew the crop initially and then we had somebody else extract the oil for us and we had somebody else make the biodiesel for us and then we got into the pressing the oil ourselves and then we got into making the fuel ourselves. And our goal has always been to produce all the fuel that we need to be self-sufficient. We've done that. And we feed all the meal that's left over after we take the oil out to the heifers, which is a real good source of protein. Basically replaces what most farmers use as a soybean source. The uh, high protein sunflower meal uh, is great for our calves as far as cutting your grain costs, especially being organic. As part of the Vermont Bioenergy Initiative, we've developed an oilseed cost and profit calculator. And this was done to help uh, farmers and other oilseed related entrepreneurs be able to um, easily determine their costs um, of production and the potential for profit of each of the um, oilseed products. The nice thing about growing these oil seeds is that, is that it's very economical for us. It fits into our program real well. Uh, we're producing uh, fuel for our tractors for $1.71 a gallon, which as everyone knows, it's pretty economical compared to what's out there. It's not enough that local biofuel production is economical, it must also be sustainable. Because it takes energy to make energy, not all biofuels are equal. Biofuel production using energy intensive methods will have a low or possibly even negative net energy return. So we're most interested in the fuels, the feedstocks, and the processes that generate considerably more energy than it takes to produce them. And we also need to account for the greenhouse gas impacts related to the production and use of these fuels. Vermont farms fueling their equipment with their own biodiesel have been shown to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions by one ton of CO2 per acre per year. What that means is that for every 500 acres in oilseed crop production, Vermont farmers are avoiding the equivalent CO2 emissions of 100 passenger vehicles each year. A life cycle assessment for biofuel involves looking at the entire process from the production of the feedstock material 
to processing that material into biofuel and then using that fuel uh, in place of, ideally in place of a fossil fuel source. This greenhouse gas calculator that I developed for the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund allows you to look at the greenhouse gas impact of an individual farm, an individual production method to better understand what the greenhouse gas impact is and where the big areas are that might be changed to increase the overall greenhouse gas benefits, decrease overall emissions. One of the big differences between Vermont sunflower production and national sunflower production is an, a generally an average decrease in the amount of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer that's applied during that process because farmers are actually applying manure instead of synthetic fertilizer. To create nitrogen fertilizer, you actually have to use a great deal of energy which has related greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and so the, the amount that you can reduce nitrogen fertilizer, synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, can have substantial greenhouse gas benefits to it and reduce your overall greenhouse gas emissions from the process. Well, we can feed the grain to the cows and return the manure back to the land, so we got a nutrient cycle in our farm where you know, it just makes a lot of sense. The average gallon of biodiesel produced in the state of Vermont has an energy return of about four to one. What that means is that for every unit of energy that processors invest in the production process, they get back four units of energy as biodiesel, which means this is a very profitable process, a four to one return. You know, you don't get that on the stock market. The processor that had the highest return was a processor that used organic methods and did not use synthetic fertilizers or pesticides. And so that was a, a sizable energy input that they simply didn't have to count. The number one um, value, I think, that comes out of this project is that it gives growers um, or producers who use waste oil an opportunity to look at the energy costs. People can use that information to make better decisions about what kind of infrastructure they invest in. They can also use that information to make better decisions about their growing methods and maybe try to gravitate towards less energy intense growing methods if they really want to try to maximize energy return. It is economically feasible to make your own biodiesel, especially if you, you, know, you account for what the grain value is and uh, you know, of course, fuel prices keep rising, so it, uh, you know, and, and we can control our costs off into the future. So it, it looks real promising, and, and just having a secure source of fuel is really important to us. That's like priceless.